Well, I wrote a whole chapter in my book, Alex's Adventures in Numberland, about pi, because it's kind of the most famous number in maths. It's the sort of celebrity number. Pi is the simplest possible ratio of the simplest possible shape. So the simplest possible shape being a circle, really, and pi is the ratio of all the way around it to all the way across it, its circumference to its diameter. And the Babylonians first thought it was about three. In fact, they wrote it down as three. What is interesting is that it's the simplest possible ratios of the simplest possible shape, but it's the most complicated kind of ugly number. It doesn't slice neatly. It's what's called an irrational number, which means that if you were to express it as a decimal, the decimals just go on forever without ever repeating. And people have been fascinated by this idea that something so simple, something so basic, it sort of lets you into this mess and madness and chaos. So I would like, if, with your permission, to talk about the, the work that was done by Archimedes, which has been discovered, and he did it in the following way. So there was this brilliant kind of narrative of, sort of human expedition, like kind of trying to get to the moon and then to get to the next planet, of trying to find more and more digits. He took a unit circle, so I'm going to make a unit circle on here and draw it out in green, so that you can see that's a simple circle. Lovely circle, Roger. I know, it's, I couldn't have drawn it better freehand. Also, it was one of the first numbers to gain its own symbol because you can't keep on writing 3.1415 all, all the time. And once it gained the, you know, pi, probably short for periphery, um, this symbol, it just became quite iconic. Now I'm going to draw inside a triangle, and I'll try and make this have equal signs, so we call it an equilateral triangle. So just say you were an ancient Egyptian wheel maker or something, pi is going to come up because you're going to be need to calculating the size of you know, of, of, of rims and spokes and things like that. Now, if I were to walk around this path all the way, all the way round, that is a longer path for me to walk than the path that goes in a straight line between these points, between these points and between these points. So you can see this perimeter is bigger than that. So then he went to the next stage and put another little triangle in here, and another one there, and another one there, and you get a hexagon, that just means six equal sides. And this is getting closer in length to this perimeter. And then he went to the next stage to make something with 12 sides. So you end up with a 12 side figure. Then he did 24, then he did 48, then he did 96. And this length is still less than the radius of the circle, because when you go in a straight line, it's quicker than going on a curved line. And he got out pi, is, which is, the circumference is 2 pi times the radius. This pi he gets out is 3 plus 10 over 71. That's a bound. That's, pi has got to be greater than this because this curved surface is greater than this number when you have a 96-sided regular figure. So, that wasn't the end of the story because that doesn't give you the answer. He then considered a triangle that goes outside with three equal sides. Now clearly, this is much longer. You go much further going along this path. So this is going to give a greater bound than pi. And then he filled it in with lines and with lines. And now you've got a hexagon that goes round this circle. And then he filled it in with more, and he carried on like this till the cows come home. He went all the way up to 96-sided figures again, and that gave him the other bound, which is pi is less than 3 plus 10 over 70. And using that method, Archimedes sort of upped the ante and got much closer. And that was for, I think, 1,000 years was basically how people estimated pi. And so he got two limits for this and worked out from that that pi is about 3.1412. The next great jump in understanding how to calculate pi 
required um, the era in the uh, Enlightenment and the invention of calculus. So even slightly pre-calculus, the idea of the infinite series. The simplest infinite series for pi is pi over 4 is equal to 1 minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh plus a ninth etc etc etc. So what you need to do is you just need to add as many of the terms on as possible which are kind of zigzagging and sort of honing in on pi. And the more you do, the closer you'll get pi. People do it on computers and get it to hundreds of places of decimals or more. I have no idea how accurately. This is, this is the realm of the super geek. The better the computers got, the more digits they want. And now, I think, three or seven trillion digits in pi has been the, uh, the last one that's decided. Remembering the digits in pi is just as difficult well, just as easy, it's just exactly the same as the digits in the square root of 2, square root of 3, um, phi, e, but no one wants to me memorise those ones, they want to memorise pi. I wouldn't be doing my job properly if I didn't ask you how many digits you can remember pi to. 5. 3.1459. Then maybe there's a 2 after that? Yeah, I'm <laughs> my memory is not, you know, I don't like to spend my spare time memorising pi. I got 3.14159 and I got a mnemonic. The beauty of pi is fascinating, but just memorising things is not my bag. How I like to drink, alcoholic of course, after two heavy lectures involving quantum mechanics. At first, people were sort of disconcerted by the fact that pi, the numbers in pi, the digits never repeat. How has three letters, I has one, 3.1, like four, two, three point one four two, drink five, alcoholic nine. But actually, this fact that they don't repeat is actually what's fascinating. Of two, and then we're getting where I don't know, two six course after five the heavy lectures. The pattern they're so devoid of any pattern that actually the digits in pi, if taken as random numbers, are the most random numbers that, that we know of, really. They pass sort of every test for randomness with, 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 with flying colours. After five, the three heavy five lectures, I can't count eight, involving quantum mechanics. And you can get even longer ones than these. These are ways of remembering it. If you can remember the phrase, but of course I can't remember the phrase, I prefer to remember the number. What you had during the 1970s and 80s was a, a sort of arms race between America and Japan, where you know, the two great tech nations developing their supercomputers and really no one really cares what digit is the two billionth digit in pi is, but you want to do it because it shows how strong your computer is. They're not interested in the digits in pi because it's going to be any use in terms of doing any calculations with circles. Because just say, you know, you're a high precision wheel design or something, or even if you're doing something for like a spaceship, 10 pi to 10 decimal places, that's probably more than enough. You're just never going to need that much, but now we have it to several trillion decimal places. To a physicist, there's an engineering approach that if you've got it on your calculator to enough significant figures, you really don't care. Because most of the time when we're working in physics, you work to two or three significant figures. It's good for testing computers, and it's also a fantastic to have this set of beautifully random numbers. It's kind of perfect chaos. <laughs>